And Ezekiel 18.20 clearly teaches that God does not hold children accountable for the sins of the parents. Let me read that one. The soul who sins is the one who will die. The son will not share the guilt of the father, nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous man will be credited to him, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him. In other words, God is fair. The principles of personal accountability and free will apply. Well, what about the Immaculate Conception? One curious corollary of the original sin doctrine is that Christ himself somehow escaped original sin. Since it's passed on through heredity, everyone believed Jesus was sinless. This really does cause a problem, because if sin is passed generation to generation, then Jesus should have inherited sin from his mother. Now, it was postulated that since Jesus had only one human parent, she must have been without original sin. The other parent, if you can look at it that way, I mean, of course, God is his father, but you have the Holy Spirit, and no one would say that, that God transmitted sin, so... If Jesus had sin, it would have come through Mary. And why wouldn't it have come through Mary if original sin is passed on to all human beings? A miracle is invoked. Mary must have been without original sin or must not have transferred hers to her son. Now, many people mistakenly confuse the Immaculate Conception with the virgin birth. Yet the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception states that Mary not Christ, was conceived without sin, with the result that she had no original sin to pass on to her son, Jesus. So the virgin birth teaches simply that Mary was a virgin when she conceived. Immaculate conception, you'd think it was about Jesus being born sinless. But no, that's not what that means. Immaculate conception means that Mary was born without original sin. In 1950, the Vatican extended the logic to claim that even Mary's mother, too, was immaculately conceived. Her name is Anne, or Anna, or uh, Saint Anne. This, this is an official Catholic doctrine, but you see where this leads, don't you? Why not go the whole way? Why not push the regression back one step and another step, and eventually say that every human descended from, uh, from Adam was preserved from the stain of original sin. You see, once you start making the exception, we're showing that the rule is no rule at all. I consider that this short study is sufficient to refute the original sin doctrine. And if original sin is refuted, then the associated doctrine of infant baptism is wholly unnecessary. Now, we come to that with no strikes against us. Now, of course, we all strike out anyway, through sin. This is our experience. We know it. If we're honest and humble, we admit it. We strike out. But it's not because we had three strikes against us when we stepped up to the plate. To begin with such a disadvantage as original sin states, well, that, that just wouldn't be cricket.